Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Stitch Sessions. We are rounding off our spring cleaning month with dishcloths. How can you do any spring cleaning without these? So um, we're going to show you this really easy stitch. You can't see it here. We've got it in variegated as well, uh, yarn. It's called the moss stitch. It's also known, I think, as the linen stitch. And uh, as long as you know single crochets and chain stitches, you are good to go with this project. And uh, it's great for practicing those stitches. And I love um, making dishcloths because A, it's a great way to practice your stitches, but B, um, this cotton yarn, these dishcloths are the best to, to work with and do some cleaning around the house. So it doesn't take you long. Uh, usually you can find the little um, handy crafter uh, cotton balls. I think they come, the skeins come in 42 gram um, balls and you can usually make two of these uh, washcloths. So what is a spring clean without a washcloth? On that note, let's get cooking on our linen stitch washcloth. <laughs> All right, guys, in order to make your dishcloth, you're going to need a skein of 100% cotton yarn. And uh, you can use any company, any brand you like. This is the Bernat Handicrafter yarn. It is 100% cotton. And it comes in skeins of 42.5 grams, I believe. And you can make two dishcloths out of one of these skeins. So I, um, I had started a different project and then I decided against it. So that's why I've got some, um, wrapped up here. So you're going to need that. You will need a, in this project, I'm going to use a five millimeter hook. Uh, that is what this um, yarn calls for, so I'm sticking to that. Sometimes I will use a 4.5 for a dishcloth because I want the stitches to sit a little bit tighter. Um, just kind of give me a little bit more fortification here. So I used a variegated yarn in this case, and I believe I did use a 4.5 in this one. So the stitches sit a little bit tighter. Um, but it doesn't really matter. It's just uh, whatever your preference. And as always, you'll need a pair of scissors and a darning needle later on to sew in your ends. So let's get started here. What you'll need to do is you'll need to start with a slip knot. And once you have your slip knot, we're going to need to begin with our foundation chain row. So um, for this particular stitch, you can use any even number of stitches you like. In my case, I tended to use 38 or 40 stitches. For this one, I used 38 stitches and then including the border row I have here, it gave me approximately seven and a half inches across and I think I kept going until I had the same measurement along the other way, which was just shy of a seven and a half inches. Um, or you can count the number of rows you've got. So I've got 36 rows that I've done here and with 38 stitches across and 40 including the, um, the border row. So uh, I would say seven and a half to eight inches um, across and width would make a good size. What I like to do is I like to place my hand over it. If my whole hand can fit on it, then to me that's going to be a good um, washcloth. Or if I need to, you know, clean off a surface, I want to know that I can um, place my hand over it uh, nicely and comfortably. Okay. So I am going to chain 38 for my chain row. So you'll yarn over and pull through and keep in mind that you want to keep your first chains 
relatively relaxed. Um, and I always recommend if you are a tight crocheter, go up a hook size. So I would do maybe a 5.5 millimeter hook in this case, uh, just to do the initial chains and then go back down to the five afterwards. So, um, but that's totally up to you. And uh, if you are a, you know, somewhat relaxed crochet, like I know now how to gauge my chains. So I don't worry so much about um, changing hooks. So I'm just going to go ahead and do my 36 chains. And when you have the desired number that you like, I will meet you there. And remember, it just has to be an even number of chains. Once you have your 38 chains, you just want to make sure that they are all fairly evenly done. Okay. You are now going to begin um, our next row. So what you're going to do is find the second chain from the hook. So that's the first one. Here's the second one. And into that first chain, you are going to insert your hook and pull through and you want to resolve a single crochet. Okay, so you have something that looks like that. Then we're going to chain one. You will skip a chain and then single crochet into the next chain after that. So you'll yarn over and resolve like a single crochet. So that will create a little space in there between the first single crochet and the second one, which is actually in the third chain. And that's what you're going to keep doing. You're going to chain one again. You will skip the next chain space. Sorry, you'll skip the next chain and into the next one, you will single crochet. So you just immediately insert your hook, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Then you chain one, skip one, single crochet into the next. So this is the pattern. You're going to single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet, chain one, skip one. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You can pause the video and I will meet you just at the very end, just as we're about to end off this round. And I'm coming up to the end of my round. And once you do your chain one, you should have two stitches left, which I do here. So you're going to skip one and into the last chain, you will you will single crochet into that. Okay, so your work will look something like this. Okay, so there'll be a space in between all of your single crochets. So now what we're going to do is we're going to chain one. You're going to turn your work and now right into that very first uh, space we are going to single crochet into that space. Then we'll chain one as we did before. And now the stitches will be really easy to find because now we're going to simply work into all of the chain spaces. So once you've chained one, you'll find the next chain space, which is right there. And you'll single crochet into the chain space. Chain one. Find the next chain space and single crochet into that. So pretty straightforward. Chain one and single crochet. Chain one and single crochet. And you're going to do that all the way down to the end. And this will be your repeat for the whole project. So go ahead and do that and I will meet you just as we're about to end row two. When you come to the end, you're going to have one chain space left. So after you've chained one, 
you're going to single crochet into that chain space. And then what you're going to do is you're going to single crochet into that last loop here that you've done. That was your chain one turn from before. So you're going to single crochet into that. Then you'll chain one and turn your work. And now we are going to immediately single crochet into that chain space there. Okay, so that'll create a little gap there. And then we'll continue on. Chain one, single crochet into the chain space, chain one, single crochet into the chain space. So this is the pattern that you're going to do for as many rows as you like, um, depending on the height or the width of the um, dishcloth that you're making. So go ahead and do that. And I'm going to meet you once more at the end of this row, just to make sure we're on the same page. So chain one and single crochet into each and every space. Chain one, find the space, and single crochet. So at the end of this next row here, which would be row three, I've single crocheted into my last space. There's a single crochet and then there's that chain one that we did at the beginning. So what we're gonna do is we're going to chain one and then we're going to single crochet into that chain one from the beginning of that previous row. So I'm going to try and fit it in here so I get both loops. And there you have it. So I've got my chain one, a space, uh, sorry, I've got my single crochet, a chain one space, and a single crochet. So this will even out your ends here. So um, so at the beginning of this one, I only chained one and went immediately into that next space. So what we want to do when we come around is we want to make sure that we chain one and go into that last um, stitch again as always. So as usual, we are going to chain one, turn our work, and go into the first space, which is right there. So we'll single crochet into that first space. And this is how we're gonna do each and every single row with a chain one and single crochet. So go ahead and do that and I will meet you again at the end of this row because some rows will end with, um, like here, it looks like there's two single crochets next to each other, and then some will just be a chain one uh, and a space. So remember, if you're ever unsure, count your stitches, and that will never um, steer you wrong, okay? So let's just do this once more all the way to the end. I will meet you there, and then I will set you loose to do the height that you would like or the width of your dishcloth. Alrighty, and now coming up to the end of row four. And as you can see, I have a single crochet and one chain space there, and this was my chain one. So I'm gonna chain one, I'm gonna single crochet, into my space and then I'm going to single crochet into that chain one loop. And I'm just going to pick up that extra loop at the back and what that's going to do is it's going to even out my edges and make sure that my stitch count is still the same. So if I lay down my work here you can see that my sides are coming out nice and even. And you can really start to see the pattern taking shape now in the linen stitch. Really pretty. 
I actually used this stitch to make a um, a top last summer. So it's really great because it's it's nice and closed in nature. So there you have it. That is the linen stitch. Now go ahead and do the number of rows that you want and I will meet you back here so that we can just finish off with a simple little single crochet of border. All right, so I have finished 28 rows and I have run out of my yarn. Now this one is 35 rows. So as you can see, it's a little bit short, but I am not going to worry about it because I have a little bit of uh, white that I'm going to use as a border. And for me, I can still place my hand on it so I can kind of scrunch it up if I need or really move it around. So um, not an exact science, but that's the beauty of projects like this. And you can see how lovely that texture is of the linen stitch. I just love that. So for me, I'm going to end there. And what I'm going to do is, I'll actually just fasten this off here. Okay. So for the border row, I've got a little bit of this white cotton yarn left over from another project, so it works out perfect. I am going to begin with a slip knot. And actually, this is a bit of a long tail, so I'll just snip that out there. Just work over that. And you can insert anywhere you like. I, um, I think I will start in this. Actually, I'm going to start in the center. I have a thing sometimes. I don't like the corners to sit so obvious. I'm going to start right in the center here. And the reason I like to sometimes start in the center is I find seaming it together at the end is a lot easier uh, with a seamless join and it makes it a lot more um, smoother, smoother transition. So I'm going to insert my hook and what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my hook into a chain space. It doesn't have to be a chain space, but... I'm going to insert my hook into it doesn't matter which side that you're on and I'm going to slip stitch to secure my yarn here okay and I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to single crochet back into that same space so I want to create a proper single crochet stitch okay and what we're going to do is we're just going to put one single crochet into each stitch all the way around and so we're just keeping it nice and simple so you can see here we just did one single crochet into every stitch all the way around just gives it a nice finishing row okay so into the next one now be careful because it would naturally be oh I'm going to go into this space but remember that there is another stitch right here. So it might be a little snug here and feel free to go right into the center of those two legs there and work your single crochet as usual. Okay, and then I'd go into the next uh, stitch which would be the space. I'd work a single crochet there. And I'm, I'm going to use this opportunity to work over that tail. The next one is an actual stitch. And cotton yarn can be a little bit grabby, so. And then I continue on. So you're going to single crochet one into the space, and then the next one into the stitch. And you're going to do that all the way until you get to the corner. And then I'm going to join you again there just to talk about how we round out the corner and then talk about working down the sides of stitches. So go ahead and finish these and I will meet you shortly. Okay, so I'm, so I'm at my last stitch, which is a space. Well, it's created a space because I fastened off here. So I'm going to insert my hook and do a single crochet as usual. 
And so I want to come around the corner here. So I will do another two single crochets back into the same space. So I'll do another one. So that's number two. And then I'll do one more, which is number three. And you should be able to see that we're rounding out that corner quite nicely. And now I'm going to work over this tail. So now we are working down the side of our work. And I have to say, single crochets are probably the easiest stitch to work into the side of um, because they're fairly equal in size, whether they're on their side or lengthwise. So you just want to simply put one single crochet into the side of each stitch going all the way down. So if I just stretch out my work a little bit, you can see that each stitch stretches beautifully. So there, there's a single crochet, there's a chain, there's a single crochet. So it's, it's pretty self um, identifying. Okay. So what we're going to do is this first stitch here is right there. So I'm just going to insert my hook and yarn over and keeping in mind I want to work over that short tail and I'm going to work my single crochet as usual. Then the very next stitch is right here. Now try not to go into the, because this is a chain one here, I actually still try to work into the actual stitch. So I try to, I just feel it keeps it looking fairly uniform. See that? So it stays in line there. The next one is, is a stitch, so I'll work into that. And there you have it. So you can see it just rounds out quite nicely. And actually, this worked out great. I really like the white against the, um, the turquoise here. So guys, you are all set. All we're going to do now is a finishing row of single crochets all the way around. And remember, when you get to each corner, you're going to single crochet three times into that corner. And what I'm going to do is I'll do one more corner with you. So go ahead and finish the side of your work, and uh, we'll do one more corner together. And then you are off to the races. Alrighty, I'm coming up to that next corner here. So I have one more stitch I'm going to work into here. And now I'm going to come to my corner. And actually, you're going to be able to see that this is your foundation chain row here. So it's going to feel a little bit um, more vulnerable, I guess. It's, it doesn't have as much fortification as the top stitches do, but not to worry. So we need to identify that corner stitch, which is right there. And I'm going to insert and do a single crochet. And there we go, it opened right up. So now I'm going to do a second one into the corner. And I'm going to do a third one into the corner. Okay. And there you go. It just goes so beautifully right around the edge there. And now it should be a little easier. Like I said, we this is our foundation chain row. And you can tell we're actually working along the back now. Um, it doesn't really matter which side because of the design of this, but just because we're at the foundation row is when you can really tell that we're on the um, back of the work. So what you want to do is just insert your hook into every stitch along the way. Now remember there will be spaces here because this is how we created the linen stitch design. Um, or stitch I should say, but to keep things consistent really try and go into the actual chain if you can. So this one is a chain one, so I'm going to go into that. Now I, I will preface by saying it is your preference, whatever is your preference. I like the idea of the look of uniformity, of keeping the stitches looking all the same, uh, for a finishing row anyway. So now this is into the bottom of that stitch. And this is into the chain one, which is right there. So for me, that's what I like. And this is the bottom of that stitch. Okay. So now you can really see, <clears throat> just back up here. Wow, I, have, I really like the white on the, in fact, I 
might even use this as a face cloth and not a dishcloth. And that's the beautiful thing about this project is you can um, use it for many different purposes. So there you go, a finishing row of single crochets all the way around. So go ahead and finish your edges. And I'll meet you here and we'll go through one of the So see you very soon. All right, guys, I have done my border. Love how this turned out. And so I'm at my last space here, and you might think, well, there's still a spot in here. But in reality, we need that to snug it in there. And I wish my camera would focus, there we go. So I'm gonna leave that there, and I've left this loop up, and I'm gonna snip my yarn, and leave a bit of a tail. And then what I'm going to do is I am just going to pull that loop all the way out. And I'm going to thread my yarn here in my yarn needle. And if you've seen many of my other videos, you know how much I love this join for a lot of most projects I like to use this join. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the top of that first stitch. Now remember, this is the chain one that we did at the very beginning. I'm actually going to skip over that. I am going to find this next stitch here. I'm going to insert the needle into that the full stitch, which is those two loops there. And I am going to pull snugly. Then I'm going to come back around and I'm going to go into through the top, down the center, and out the bottom of this stitch. So see this would be the back loop and this is the back bottom loop. So there we go. Just going to come out there and I'm going to pull gently but snugly and this should bring these two stitches together. Okay. So when you look at it, now this one's coming up a little bit tighter. When you look at it, it just looks like another stitch that goes across. And this one's probably cotton yarn needs to be a little snugger. So sometimes, especially with cotton yarn, that happens a lot. There we go. So when you lay it flat, hopefully, it just looks very uniform. And there you have it. Now, uh, you don't leave it like this. You want to make sure that um, you go through the back and and we want to secure this stitch so I just go through the back and usually I'll come up the back bottom loop of the stitch next to it and I'll pull up it just gives it a little bit more of a solidification there and we just sew in our ends now and go back and forth. And if you like to just, uh, you know, uh, chain one slip stitch and then snip off your yarn, you can certainly do that too. But this is just how I like to do it. And that's another reason why I love crochet so much is it's an art that has so many different options. And there isn't just one exact way of doing things. There's always different versions and different people come up with different methods, which is really cool. And sometimes, um, you know, you use different methods for different situations. Like I will definitely um, use a slip stitch and a fasten off on many projects. And then I just sew in the ends after. And then there are other projects where I like to use this seamless join. So now all I'm doing is I'm just going back and forth and I'm hiding this end here. And sometimes I like to go a little further out and then I'll go back and forth to lock it in. So I'll go through here, oops. And then one more time, I'll go back 
in through there just to lock it in nice and snug and then I'll snip my yarn and we are good to go so here we have it our very own dishcloth slash face cloth so this is using the linen or moss stitch it came out so pretty and this is fantastic for all kinds of things especially washcloths remembering to use a hundred percent cotton and you are good to go now if you have any questions regarding this tutorial or this stitch you know you can always leave us a comment or just email me directly at info at crochetcrafty.com and uh, remember to click the subscribe button so you'll stay up to date on all of our free tutorials and if you enjoy listening to some of our um, stitch session conversations and uh, crocheting along with us that would be great we love having you so um, just make sure to click the notification bell as well so you'll know every time we upload in the meantime everyone have a great day take care and happy crocheting <music>